Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. It is your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me directly, email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Today, we're discussing an early 2000s Chrono Swiss Lunar Chronograph. This is from the GR Long era of Chrono Swiss, the original era, a timepiece beautifully made in stainless steel. It's a little bit difficult to describe the size. As you can see, we've got the measurement from the bezel, which has a little bit of an outcropping, and then the measurement from the middle barrel of the case. So I'm gonna give you both measurements. If you measure from the middle barrel to the opposite side, the diameter is 37.4. If you measure from one side, Side of the outcropping of the bezel to the other, the diameter is 38.1. It is 14.8 millimeters thick, and lug to lug, it is 48.1 millimeters with a 20 millimeter spacing between the lugs. Throw the watch on the wrist, and you can see it wears easily, though it does wear large for something that in theory could be measured at just over 37 millimeters. It's not thick, although over 14 millimeters, almost 15 really, it does fit fairly easily underneath the cuff. There's nothing really insulting about that profile, and the generously domed bezel means it should fit even under dress sleeves. Taking a quick look, you can see that because it's got an officer's watch-like case profile, those long straight lugs mean it wears as a larger timepiece. So I'm gonna say you need a wrist of 15 centimeters circumference or larger to really wear this well. And again, my wrist is gonna be 16 centimeters in circumference for comparison. Taking a look at the strap, you can see it is a Jean Rousseau custom piece. JR makes the straps OEM for FP Journe and many others. That's why we like them here. We often put upscale watches on fine handmade Jean Rousseau Parisian straps, and they never disappoint. Large rectangular scale alligator leather, large and symmetrical scales, a particularly expensive cut. Gloss finish, black, monotone stitch. You can see there's a folded edge calfskin on the bottom. Brand new strap, no crimping, no gouging, and it has the matching Chrono Swiss stainless steel pin buckle. Now taking a quick look, you could see that the case is a sort of fusion of Breguet styling ethics and a little bit of the officer's watch style. So we have these lugs that are strongly broken out from the case band with a little bit of an undercurled teardrop taper. The strap is held on using screws and bars, which is a bit more expensive than spring bars, but it's also more secure. It's the way Breguet does things, and Chrono Swiss, though a German company in its original iteration, was so named because it was in tribute to the horological industry and traditions of Switzerland in which Chrono Swiss founder G.R. Long was steeped. He originally worked for, among others, Hoyer, particularly in sports timing and chronograph work during the 1970s. And in 1983, as the quartz crisis was claiming most of practical mechanical watchmaking in Switzerland, he created Chrono Swiss, a celebration of mechanical watchmaking in the Swiss tradition, which is why we often talk about these watches being German-Swiss hybrids. That's the reason. Long was German, his company was German. Uh, the watches oftentimes were made in Switzerland or largely with Swiss parts. Now, the timepiece also features an onion style crown. Again, think officer's watch style and a knurled bezel with a case back to match. Again, think Breguet and officer's watch designs. But then we've got a little bit of a Patek Philippe Tasti Tondi chronograph round button with turbine profile. So there's a few design cues here. Uh, satination vertical along the case band and the lug profiles, polish on the lug hoods, and then you could see that we have the watch's reference between the lugs at 6 o'clock and the serial number up at 12 o'clock. That's how you read a traditional GR Long era Chrono Swiss. The dial is a sort of stamped guilloche. That's where this pattern comes from. And then we've got a combination of a radial date, a moon phase, and a chronograph. So this is going to be an ETA 7750. Typically, this is described as an ETA 7751, which is the radial date moon phase version. Now, the watch has elaborate modified brake a style hands at center. All the hands are white varnished to contrast nicely against the black base. We do have a hacking or stop seconds function. We also have a double quick set and the double quick set allows you to easily rapidly set the moon phase which you can see I'm now setting right right there. It allows you to easily set the pointer style date. And you can see an elaborate a Breguet style of Arabic numeral has also been used radially arrayed for that date track. Uh, taking a quick look, you can see the same has been done for the hour track. And the watch has a pleasing cruciform symmetry to its dial. Cut it 
top to bottom and side to side, and it's beautifully symmetrical. On the reverse side, you can see we have a particularly high grade version of 7750. Like I said, this is a 7751 because of the complications. Uh, Eticron fine adjustment. We also have a micrometric adjustment system. You can see we have a splayed spoke balance here and a hairspring to match. And the presence of those two components generally means you're looking at either a chronometer spec or a top spec of the movement. So no expense spared getting the highest grade available. 25 pivot joules, a double quick set, moon phase, radial date, eight beats per second, and a combination of a, a cam system and an oscillating pinion. So the cam is visible right here, and then the oscillating pinion, you can't quite see it, but it would be through that little hole under my finger. The cam system is endemic to the 7750 architecture, and so is the oscillating pinion, which means that if you press and hold the chronograph start button, a lot of times there's no jump or additional free play to the chronograph seconds hand, because with an oscillating pinion, there's very little play, unlike a traditional lateral clutch. An oscillating pinion is a fairly rare thing. You tend to see it on super high-end chronographs, and then anything based on a 7750, which is a little bit incongruous, but that is the fact of the matter. Uh, the watch is a 46-hour automatic winding power reserve. The winding action is unidirectional. And though Chrono Swiss calls this the C755, again, it is a 7751. That's what it actually is. And it's all water resistant down to 30 meters. Reach out to Team Also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.